Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to take a look at the modelling of shear thinning fluids. Specifically, we're going to consider the power law method. Now, there are many mathematical expressions that have been proposed within the literature to model shear thinning characteristics. Now, there are several different types of uh, fluids. This is just one of a few. You also have shear thickening fluids. You also have uh, non-Newtonian fluids uh, and Newtonian fluids. But here we're just going to consider the shear thinning fluids. Now, some of these uh, expressions can be very straightforward attempts at what we would call curve fitting. So when a system is fairly complicated, what we can try and do is make it fit a curve or a linear relationship. That way it gives us an easier way of predicting the values. Now, empirical relations um, for the shear stress or apparent viscosity to the shear rate curves can be expressed. Now, we do have some theoretical basis in statistical models. And these are extensions of the applications related to kinetic theory. Because in essence, when we have a fluid flowing, one of the key energy um, elements is the kinetic theory. So we can integrate this theory with a theoretical basis for a statistical model. And that way we can get the, the idea of liquid state or the theory of rate processes. Now we aren't going to go into the details of these types of systems um, in this lesson. But we're just going to look at the generalized power law model. Also known as the Oswald-Dewell model. And it is a log-log plot of the shear stress versus the shear rate, which is approximated by a straight line over a limited range of shear rates or shear stresses. Now, the straight line will give us the linear relationship whereby if we know the value of the shear rate, we can determine the value of the shear stress. Now the equation here is that our shear stress is given by tau yx is equal to m bracket, now this is gamma yx to the power n. Now gamma is the shear rate. So we have the shear stress as a function of the shear rate. Now the apparent viscosity is given by mu. And mu is the relationship between the shear stress and the shear rate. Now we know that this is a rate because we have a dot here. Now this can also be equal to m bracket to the shear rate to the power n minus 1. Now we'll talk about the values of m and n in just a second. So that's where this relationship can be attained in order to determine the apparent viscosity. Now, m is the fluid consistency coefficient, and n is the flow behavior index. Now, these parameters must be known for your given fluid. So, these are constants that have been found experimentally. Now, the flow behavior index will give you an indication based on the value of n as to what type of fluid we're actually dealing with. So for us, with shear thinning fluid, we expect an n value to be less than 1. If we have an n value that equals 1, then what we have here is a Newtonian fluid. And then our n greater than 1 would give us a shear thickening fluid. Now just out of uh, sheer curiosity, if we were to have an n value of 1, then this would become to the power 0. And anything to the power 0 becomes 1. So the apparent viscosity would be equal to the fluid consistency coefficient i.e. the ratio of the shear stress to the shear rate. And that would make sense that Newtonian fluid behaviour corresponds to this apparent viscosity value. Now the power law model does offer a simplistic representation of the, theor uh, sorry, the shear thinning behaviour. And it is most widely appropriate model within the literature as it deals with process engineering applications. Because sometimes our system doesn't have to be modelled to a precise uh, level of accuracy. Sometimes we just need to know a generalised um, overview of the system and to see what kind of characteristics we are dealing with. Now the power law does have some uh, limitations. And 
A few of the limitations would be that it applies over a limited range of the shear rates, and therefore the fitted values of M and N will depend on this rate. Eh, sorry, this range of shear rates. It doesn't predict the zero and infinite shear viscosities. So again, that's why we have our limits. It's over a limited range. If you want to know the, the values for a zero and an infinite shear viscosities, then you would have to look at a different model. And we look at these different models in our fluid mechanics uh, course. I'll put a link in the description to that course um, for your reference. Now, the dimensions of a flow consistency coefficient, m, depend on the numerical value of n. So, therefore, the value of m must not be compared when the value n differs. Now, that's very, very important, and we'll see that in just a second, that the value of m is dependent on the value of n. So, when we try to, if you were, say, to take logs or you were to try and uh, simplify the system, you couldn't use a standard means because the value of m cannot be compared to the value of n directly. And you'll see here as to why, because the value of n is, doesn't have any units, whereas the value of m is in pascal seconds to the power n. So depending on the power n will give us the corresponding value of m. So this is a standard table for typical values of the power law constants. Now this is just for a few systems. There is a lot more um, tables and a lot more different types of systems um, that you can have a look at. We do have some of these uh, literatures um, in our online resource library, so uh, you can be sure to check that one out, and you can get more uh, different constants. So, for example, if we had human blood here, then at 300 degrees Kelvin, we would know that we have an N value of 0 0.9 and an M value of 0 0.004. Now, a value of 0 0.9 indicates that this is a shear thinning fluid. All of these are shear thinning fluids. So therefore, we would expect all of these n values to be less than 1. Now if we look at a working exercise, then it asks us here to calculate the viscosities of the following two materials when we have a shear rate of 100 seconds to the minus 1 at temperatures around the room temperature and we have to use the power law model. Now we're going to use human blood and we're going to use ammonium alginate. So again, we can get these values. There is human blood here and ammonium alginate is here. So this is where we're going to get these values from. So we have our 0 0.9 and our 0 0.004, 0 0.5 and 13 respectively. So if we look at the human blood, there is our values for 300 degrees Kelvin. Now we know that the viscosity is equal to m multiplied by the shear rate n to the minus 1. So that's the power n minus 1. So what we do is we just substitute in the values. We know our shear rate, we were told, is 100 seconds to the minus 1. We multiply that by m to the power 0 0.9 minus 1. So that would give us a viscosity value of 0.0025 pascals uh, seconds. So we can then just uh, simplify that uh, to 2.5 m pascal seconds. Now for the ammonium alginate, it's exactly the same thing, but this time we have a m value of 13 and a n value of 0 0.5. So we just substitute them into this simple equation and rearrange and we get 1.3 pascal seconds. And that's how you would go about solving the shear thinning fluid um, power law model when we have the values of n and m and we just use these very, very simple formulas. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding the concept of the power law model. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you in another video.